Hey guys, it's Kale, and today I'm going to play one of my favorite games of all time, Jurassic Park Trespasser. Now this game has a little bit of infamy. Um, it has some pretty strange control schemes and uh, a lot of bugs. Now I'm sorry my audio is messed up. I, my, I have a terrible audio card on my computer and it can only do like one thing at once. So the audio from the game is going to have to be recorded through my mic. Let's keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to try to fix it, but... We'll see. Now, this game actually features the vocal talents of both Minnie Driver and Richard Attenborough, which is really impressive. It's the first game to ever feature a uh, full-world um, physics system. I don't know why I couldn't find the words to say that. And it also had specular lighting, real-time shadowing, and bump mapping, which was really impressive for 1998. Uh, DreamWorks forced the game to be released early, and it ended up flopping because of that. Alright, let's just get right started. Alright, now this is our first level, the beach. Uh, as you can see, Anne was in a plane crash. And she was lucky enough to land in the water or something. And by the way, this tail of the plane is really tiny compared to her. Alright, so... The basics of the game is that you can move the character's arm and pick things up, and it's all physics-based, and it's... This game was originally intended to be a survival horror, so there are a lot of puzzles. There's a ripple effect for the water, though I do believe it's pre-rendered and not procedural. Though there is a lot of procedural animation in this game, which... Uh, is pretty flawed, as you'll see in a bit. Um, I'm gonna head up here. Now, this is one of the first games to feature large open air environments like this, which is pretty impressive. Um, this is just a little tutorial area, kind of tries to get you to understand the mechanics of the game. Um, I played this game a lot, so I know how to play it. <laughs> um, but it is very difficult to get the hang of. Uh, so, for instance, if, if if you look, there is a physics system, and in 1998, that was impressive. I think Gabe even said that this game inspired some of the physics for Half-Life, which was impressive. Uh, they did a really good job. Now, there's a problem, there isn't any friction, so sometimes things will slide around really awkwardly. Uh, you can throw objects, too, like this just by hitting F. Um, yeah, see, that board fell down because of the no friction issue. Uh, there is no heads-up display for this game. Except for that tattoo on Anne's boobs, <laughs> which is her health. So, yep. Take note of this foundation as we'll be seeing what it is in a few minutes here. But first, we're going to go to the shooting range. Sorry about that jumping, I know it's really annoying. Must be one of the offshore islands. Cocos... What a Cinco Muertes, maybe. I reference this game a lot, but nobody gets it because it's really obscure. Also, I should note, I am using the ATX patch, which makes the game a little bit more bearable and fixes the glitches. It's unofficial, but yeah. Okay. So, here's the thing. You have to move her arm to aim. And you have to line up the shots because you can rotate her hand. Oh god. Okay, there. Like that. There is also a random sound generator in this game, so the sound design is actually really well done. Everything's well done, except the, the engine, which is really unfortunate. I'm gonna keep this shotgun because it's super useful. Now, here's the first puzzle of the game, I guess. Uh, in this game, you throw a lot of rocks at crates. Oh, wait. Yeah. Duh. I can grab this. Huh. There we go. Um. Yeah, you can throw... It's a lot of throwing rocks at crates and stacking things. Which is... Um. Okay, I guess. And there's a baseball out there. I'm not picking it up. Melee weapons are completely useless in this game, as they would be if you were actually trying to 
fight off dinosaurs with a baseball bat. <laughs> it's um, yeah, it, it's not the best. Now, this this billboard is showing a hotel for the beach. That's what that, that foundation was. I think that's look cool. Also, there's Richard Attenborough himself. Um, she's remembering his memoir, and that's what his voiceovers are as she's going. And also, this uh, this foundation. I don't know. I, I like that. They add a little a lot of little subtle things like that that give this game atmosphere which is fantastic the, the feel to this game is really cool if you can get past the flawed mechanics all right we're gonna head up here and have our first dinosaur encounter I'm hoping I can sync this audio properly. If not, that's going to be really awkward for everyone involved. Financial empire waits somewhere in a darkened room in a dirty, derelict building somewhere in the Pacific. I say that all the time, and nobody understands what I'm talking about. They're like, "What? Are you crazy?" Uh, yeah, I mean, my work, my work lies where I left it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh shoot. I'm trying to keep this, this as clean as possible, but, uh, oh, there we go. Um, I'm going to end up swearing. I'm sorry. <laughs> now here, these things aren't animated in a standard way. They're actually animated by the program itself uh, through the physics for them, which is pretty cool. And you can see it's a little awkward, but... It gets worse. It gets worse later on. You'll see. You'll see some raptors doing awkward things and T-Rex tripping over their, its own feet. Which is unfortunate. <laughs> Alright. Now, the first enemy is usually around this area, but he can spawn randomly, so... Now, I, I might... I, the, the reason I might be so in love with this game is the fact that Richard Attenborough is in this, and the memoir is so good. There's actually a fan-made thing of just the audio clips from his point of view, and uh, it's called Jurassic Time. It's really really good. Alright, line those sights up before I walk around this corner and get killed. You're gonna see me die a lot in this playthrough. The enemies were supposed to have really well done AI, but the issue is it wasn't fully implemented. But there is like a fear and curiosity setting. Holy... How is that happening? Oh god. Okay. <sighs> that could have been bad. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you noticed, but Anne actually speaks out loud the um amount of ammunition left. Which I think is pretty cool. Um, sh sh I don't know if you heard that. Oh. This is not good, he's so close. Alright, I hit him. There we go. Now, as you notice, you can only use one really wonky arm in this game. And I think it, it's sort of just rule of thumb that Anne has broken her arm or something. 
so that's why you can only use one, because their other arm doesn't work. Get up here. This is one of my favorite scenes from the beginning of the game. Uh, this monorail was for businessmen who would come and visit Site B, investors and things like that. And it led all the way around the island into the research facilities into the town called the Burrows, which we will be seeing both the research facilities and the Burrows later. So there's something to look forward to. I also always really enjoyed this. Alright, and this is the end of the first level. After we hop over this fence, it'll load into the next one. And, uh... It's kind of interesting, because <laughs> the way they did it, each level is its own instance, so you never get to keep the weapons. Ever. So, we can say bye to our nice shotgun. Alright, well... That was that for the first level, and for the first episode of this Let's Play. Uh, I guess I'll see you all when I see you.